Norwood to take it, it's pushed along the deck to Baldock here at the byline, in it goes, low chance, cleared off the line, Sharps there, battling and he scored! Billy Sharp, the Sheffield United captain, has squeezed the ball over the line, fitting them that the boyhood blade gets their first goal upon their return to the Premier League. It was a goal. Hello everyone, it's been a while, hasn't it, that we are back. This is the one of our own podcast here down at Bramall Lane. As you can see, we're in the Sheffield United home dressing room and we've got a man with us today who uh, very much sums up the title of the podcast, one of our own. We've got Billy Sharp. I'm not going to sing it. I'm not <laughs> going to sing it. I did think about it on the way down. I thought, nah, singing's never been my strongest suit. How are you? Good to see you. Yeah, good, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, very good, very good. We're going to uh, uncover some bits and bobs about you. We know what you like on the football pitch. We'll talk about that, but... Um, find out a little bit more about Billy Sharp today. Okay. Maybe things that we don't already know. So this is your opportunity to lay yourself bare. No holding back. All right. Okay. All right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what a season, though, so far. Let's just get a brief th- thought from you on what's happened so far. Wow. Yeah, fantastic. Um, asking me at the time where we've got 40 points, which was the, nobody's going to lie, we, it was the main aim at the start of the season. And uh, we've got there very quickly. And I think there's, what, 11, 10 games to go. And... Um, we we don't want to, you know, sit back now and just settle for that. We want to, you know, we're in a great position. Uh, in the uh, got a, a chance on Tuesday night to get into the quarterfinals of the FA Cup, and then obviously it's back to the league where we we want to push on and try and pick up as many uh, positive results as possible to finish as high as we can. And uh, you know, people are starting to say. Do, 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 yeah, where do, we can do, finish, do, and do, 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 we're not we're not scared to, to hide away from it. And uh, well, I've not quite had that version yet, but <laughs> you know, just to finish any, you know, anywhere anywhere we finish now, you know, is um, it's, it's been a fantastic season. But we're here now, so we might as well have a go for it and not hide away from it. And you know, wherever we finish, it's been uh, going to be a, a fantastic season. So we don't hear much about your family, for obvious <coughs> reasons, because it's not the kind of questions that you'd normally get asked pre-game. But are, are you close? Are you tight? I am now, yeah. Uh, well, we was, and then we had a little spell apart, but um, he's my brother, so I'm back close, and uh, he's doing really well. How supportive is he of you? And have you ever detected that, oh, it's all about Billy again, all about Billy? And do, do you feel perhaps guilty sometimes <coughs> yeah, that I, the limelight is often on you? Yeah. Um, looking back, I think that's probably, you know, some of the reasons with a few of his issues, which I did feel guilty about, but uh, we've talked about it and he says it wasn't, which, you know, you grow up and we grow up in, in a normal area, as I call it, and uh, my granddad had called it one of the better places in Sheffield back in the day, but, um, you know, as it's trouble time now, like just anywhere in Sheffield can. Mm-hmm. Um, but my mum and dad raised me and my brother exactly the same way and, I just got, you know, lucky and fortunate along the way that I've managed to be a professional footballer. But like I say, he's healthy now and he's doing really well. So uh, brilliant. It's, it is brilliant, yeah. Was it always football for you? Yeah. Uh, I used to chase him at cross country, which my dad said I was good, but I didn't enjoy it. Um, having breakfast, then doing a cross country run, halfway around being sick, and my dad shouting, get up, go. And <laughs> But, you know, that, that stood me in good st- you know, instead for the for the fitness in football and swimming, I hated it. That's uh, one one thing I was never good at. Um, he, like I say, he was really good at that, but didn't like swimming. Um, I think I was too fat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, um, but yeah, I, I I like my golf and tennis and snooker, but football was always the one that gave me the most fun and the most drive. And like I say, um, got got lucky and fortunate along the way. What were you like at school? <laughs> Tried, uh, really and did. which school was it? Uh, Byron Wood School, top of the hill in uh, Ellesmere, so just, just outside Pittsmore. And, um, again, it was a lovely little school. Went to went to school, had, had a lot of friends. Don't don't speak to any of them now, but um, uh, for whatever reason. But, you know, I just had that drive of going out of school, and just just dreaming of being a footballer. And um, I don't know, my, my dad helped me along the way, obviously, a, a lot. And I've had a lot of good coaches along the way. And... Just had to be mentally strong to keep on the, you know, straight and narrow. Is Middlewood Rovers where the kind of journey began, or was this something before that? Uh, yeah, uh, Whitehall Rovers, I think it was. Whitehall Rovers. Yeah, um, I got battered every week. <laughs> Scored a lot of goals, but getting beat, and I said to my dad, Dad, I've got to move. Like, well, I think it was him. You've got to move. You're scoring, but you're losing every week. 
So we did and went to Middle Drovers at um, eight years old, I think it was. So I had four four good years there where we, we did really well, successful, scored a lot of goals. In I the, bet you can remember how many as well. I can't, I my dad you. can. He's got, honestly, he's got scrapbooks from when I was eight years old and now he's doing the same with my oldest son, Leo, who's seven. He's just started wow. with Brunsmere, so I'm going to um, read through, <laughs> through his in years to come. But yeah, um, a lot of players who played for Middlewood was... Technically better than me, um, probably all-round players probably better than me. But I, I don't know. I just I had that drive just to keep going and keep going. And um, I, some the tournaments we used to play with Middlewood were, were the ones that I always remember. The, the summer tournaments, you know, yeah. just it did just feel like playing with your mates and no pressure and um, being really successful, which was was great. And I still see a, a lot of them lads now, which is which is great as well. When did people start coming to watch you? Um, From clubs, I mean. I think it was when we was 10, 11, 12. Um, Jonathan Fort, who obviously played for Sheffield United as well, um, he played. He was a foot taller than us all and a lot quicker. And we used to play him at left back, left wing and up front, all in one. He used to just run it down the left and I was there at the back post waiting to tap him in. But um, clubs were watching him, was watching me um, and other players along the way. And I think it was... I think... I can't remember who it was who came to watch, but there was some sort of trial where we came to Sheffield United and we, there were six of us who got picked out and there was a few from Young Owls where um, Ian Ross and Colin Marisons came into it and uh, we, we managed to form a relationship together and drive each other on at the um, obviously at Sheffield United. But I did have a short spell at, at Rotherham School of Excellence as well. Yeah, you mentioned your dad. Uh, <coughs> he obviously has this obsession with how many goals you get, et cetera, et cetera. Um, do, where did where did that come from, and and does that do your head in, or are you quite appreciative of the fact no. that actually, if you need to go back and reference something, he's there and he can say, "Look, that's what you've done." Yeah, it probably does my mum's head in and my wife's head in, but um, I'm glad he's glad he's done it. It's memories, you know, um, all the green and pull up, uh, cutouts he used to do and Sheffield Star and <laughs> all that. Um, yeah, to to look back on it now, my kids look back on it and like, Dad, look, look at you now, <laughs> look, look at you there, and look at you now, <laughs> and um, no, it's great to to look back on, especially of uh, my professional career as well. Um, I do remember most of it anyway, but to to look back on it, to to bring them pictures and mm. then memories back is 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 great. Was he tough on you? Because my lad plays football, and it's a very difficult balance to strike, isn't it? Being yeah. critical for your own son, but being supportive at the same time. You don't want to be that pushy dad. Nobody no. wants to be that. Pushy no, he dad. wasn't pushy, but the the word balance is the one that I I I'd, I'd go with. Um, when we needed it, he'd he'd rev us up. But when um, you know when we needed arm round it, he, he knew what to do. And um, Sheffield Arena, the bowl, I think yeah, it's called Don Valley Bowl, with, yeah. with the grass steps. Yeah, we used to run up them. Uh, we used to run round the the track around the grass, and it was you start at the the black like water tower thing at the top, yep, and then finish up there as well. So you had the hill to finish up. We used to do them, uh, Garter Street, just off Carlisle Street, right. big hill. He used to do them for the for the London marathons. So somehow we got roped into them as well. Um, yeah, Smithies Field that was a and and the other field along Peter Street, uh, which was on the just off the Carwood Estates. Yeah. How old were you then? Um, I reckon ten. Maybe. Ten, <laughs> yeah. That's start, a lot of running. Started about ten, yeah. So, but like I said, my my brother was the is the one who were running. I hated it, but obviously, I had a drive uh, for for things and didn't want to give up. So I, I just chased him around. What about mum? What's she doing while all while all? No, this my is mom. Going to on? be fair, she's only my dad's never missed a single minute of any any game. But my mom's missed two through illness. But she's always there for me as well. She's uh, she uh, never played football. Doesn't like running, but she's uh, my mum's great and she's very supportive as well. Sometimes when, when players make a successful career, you can kind of look at the parents and maybe the dad has been a decent footballer in the past or granddad. Is that the same story with you? Did your dad play at a decent level? To be was, honest, was he I handy? Or? I never spoke to my granddad about whether he was good at football or not. And I'll have to ask my dad, but um, my dad was semi-professional, played for every pub team in Sheffield, I think. Right. Um, played on a Saturday and a Sunday. Um got sent off quite a few times but um yeah i think he was quick back in the day um and he was very good he he was you know very he had good stamina that's why he did the london marathons and stuff so he enjoyed his football but never played at a real high level so um but 
yeah, there was definitely a competitive edge into my dad, and he he, he still wants to do a marathon now, which uh, I think he's done three London, so Blimey. maybe maybe he got one more in him. I'm not sure. So to rewind a little bit, uh, you end up here as a youngster. There's still a long way to go, but. Yep. Are you even then thinking, oh, this this might be it. This might be the start of yeah, the journey. When you pull on the extra, extra, extra large Sheffield United shirt as a kid uh, back in the day, um, it was a special, special time because, like I say, I had a little stint at Rotherham, but when I came here, I, I knew that was right. It felt right. And uh, just going through the, um, the whole uh, scholar stage when you're cleaning the lads' boots and... Whose boots did you clean? Uh... Quite a few. Uh, Jags was really good with me, yeah. Which that's why I say now it's really weird that back in the changing room with him. But used to clean his boots and he was really generous. So generous how? Um, Christmas tips. Yeah, Christmas tips, yeah. end of season tips, but also with his um, his information that he gave you as a youngster. Um, you you grew up to be wanting to be a Phil Jagielka, a Nick Montgomery, and a Michael Tong. They were the ones who were great with the with the younger lads. Uh, Tongi did have a spell where he, he got sucked in with the third years who they tried to bully us a little bit in this change room um, <laughs> when we was waiting to go and do do the gym on the far side where it's not there anymore but you just have to wait around for an hour, hour and a half, clean their stuff up and then when you've come back they'd have hung it up on the ceiling, hid it, you're trying to find it for, for a good half an hour and it, you'll find it in the shower wet through so <laughs> <laughs> yeah there was all sorts of pranks back in the day which you don't get away with these days but it was all part of growing up part of trying to be a footballer and uh it was it was good good fun when did you know you'd made it uh when you when you thought actually i've got a real chance here of getting into this team um well when i went when i went on loan to russian and diamonds it was a bit of a dagger in the heart because i did to be to be fair i didn't know where where it was who they were or anything my dad again was the one didn't push me but he said you know what go and go and do the business and then you can go back and I was like, yeah, okay. I followed what you said up to now and it's worked, so I'll, I'll do yeah. that. And uh, went there, brilliant little club. Um, facilities were excellent, uh, probably better than, better, than, better than here at the time. And went there, did really well. Uh, scored, uh, I think it was nine in 15 or 16 games. We stayed up. Um, so achieved something in, in the first loan spell and came back here and it was Neil Warnock who said, well done, son. You'll be back in, you'll be back in my squad next year. And um, I was thinking, brilliant! I said, "This is it. This is my chance now. This is a chance to make to make it." Yeah. And uh, so, I'd, obviously, I didn't think I'd made it after just doing what that little cameo. But uh, I remember him then saying to me, "Scunthorpe have put a bit in, hundred grand. Uh, I think you should go." I was like, "Oh!" That was about two weeks after, and um, again went home, told my dad. He was like, "You know what? It'll be hard. It'll be tough. You'll be good to leave, but you know." maybe it's not to be you've had a taste of it which I had and I loved it and I wanted to keep playing and if it if if it wasn't for my dad to say that I'd have probably just stayed but it was one of the best decisions of my, of my career to date um went to Scunthorpe and had an unbelievable two years with with a group of young lads similar similar age to me and a few of the older senior lads which brought me on as a as a as a, as a person as a man um grew up a little bit and um did really well and managed to Sealed the move back to to Bramall Lane as uh, I think I was twenty years old. Do you remember your debut? Debut for Sheffield United. Yeah, yeah, that was just did. just before um, just before I went to Rushton. I think was it? No, just after I come back from Rushton. Before, I think. Sorry. Before I think. Before it was the uh, November. Little cross cocky. Speaking to that, Mike, we can hear you then. November two thousand and four. Yeah. Yeah. Was Watford. Was it Watford? Yeah. One apiece. Yeah. Who scored? Uh, who scored? Is it Jags? No. No. No, no it wasn't Jags. No. Who was it? This is one of the things that we do on these podcasts. All right. So I'm going to see. I, I I do remember it, but I, like I said, I don't remember the game. Okay. I can remember you. I can remember my debut back for Sheffield United. Yeah, but we'll come into that in a minute. But <laughs> that first game, Watford, one apiece, November two thousand and four. You came in as a sub very late on. Yeah, very for, late on. For who? That's what I mean. I should. I we need should. your dad here. Yeah, I know. That's what I mean. You're going to tell me, and then I'm going to be able to see me going past. You're going to have to tell me. Initials, PT. I think. PT. Yeah. Gone blank here. Same Christian name as me. Paul Thurlow. 
Paul Furwell, yeah. So also in this team, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna run you through them, but the likes of Was it Furwell? I, well, I can't see me running past him now. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Shaw, Paul Andy Shaw, Little, Andy, Andy Gray. I used to love playing with Andy Little, to be fair. I played in like the reserves a lot and he was an exceptional player. Um the type of winger that a, yeah. a scorer wants. Yeah, you don't really get it, uh, the Andy Lills in the game anymore, but he jink past people and a sharp player and whipped so many good balls in. And I, I, I loved playing with Andy Lills, to be fair. He was a good player. The goal scorer that day then. It would have been before you came on. Yeah. Honestly. Alan Quinn. Alan Quinn. Yeah, Quinn, he was a good player as well, to be fair. He was good with the young lads. Yeah, no. to be fair, I can't really remember much. I remember it being one all and against Watford, but can't remember, like I say, coming on or anything like that. It's a blur, but... I'll give you another little test then. Your first game for Russian and Diamonds, I think this is right, I'm not 100% sure. Who was your strike partner that day? Adrian Littlejohn. Yeah, yeah. I've got some good stories about Adrian. Adrian uh, Littlejohn. <laughs> yeah, we used to meet at Treble Bob, Junction 30. I know and, it, yeah. Uh, he said to me, uh, 7 o'clock tomorrow, and I was like, 7 o'clock? <laughs> <laughs> I've not seen 7 o'clock for <laughs> years, but... I had to be there at seven o'clock as well, uh, uh, Trouble Bob, so I was up very early, got there, he says, I'll drive today, you drive tomorrow, okay, got in his uh, BMW M3, flying, nice. ma flying machine, um, got to training, he settled me in, brilliant, um, looked after me loads and to be fair, made my debut with AD and I think that was probably one of his last games for, for the club and I ended up, what it was, taking his place if you like and Drew Broughton who ended up playing up front with me, came he was back fit, and but he was so supportive, and I'll never ever forget that. Um, the times in the car and the advice that he gave me, you know, through his career, and I just remember Rady being so quick, and the, the races, you know, the races that they used to pick out the fast players, and they used to, I think, they used to be a mascot race, and then he used to be the fastest yeah. players from each club. I just remember him and Franz Carr in that all the time, but uh, yeah, he was. I'll always have always remember the advice that he used to give me all the time, but. The next day, when it was my drive, he said, right, we're going to have to meet it off six. Because <laughs> I, I was in uh, Renault Clio. Couldn't go as quick as the uh, the M3. But <laughs> to be honest, travelling didn't really affect me then, but I wouldn't dream of doing that travel now. And um, that's something that I, I, I learned in my career that, you know, I, I wouldn't have wanted to have been doing. But he was coming to the end of his career and I was just starting. So, But it, it was good times as well. And like I say, I'll, I'll not... Not ever forget the you know some of the things that he did say to me. When you went to Scunthorpe, did you think that was it in terms of being a player here? Yeah, definitely. Cause you you don't know what's going to happen, and I was I was gutted because I thought you know what I've just been on loan to League Two, I've shown that I can score goals there. The manager at Sheffield United just told me I'm going to get my chance. I was rubbing my hands together. I really was. I was mm. thinking this is it. This is this is the chance that you've been waiting for as a kid, and then for him then to turn around and say, you know. I've been offered hundred grand, which, you know, I, I thought it was cheap at the time. But my, it was my dad who said, "Go on, just go and do it again. Go and score goals. Uh, it's a, a step up, League One, and then just keep working your way up." And it's exactly what I did, and um, it's all worked out fine as we sat here today. So, how did you feel then when you got the call saying they want you back again? It was Brian Robson, I think. Yeah, right? that was that was uh, weird. That to be fair, I was I'd, weird I'd, now. Sheffield United wasn't even a team in for me. Um, it was Sheffield Wednesday with Brian Laws. Yeah. See, there it, were. I remember those rumours. Yeah, I, I went to speak to him just because he was my manager at Scunthorpe and he showed a lot of interest. But I was on holiday in, in Dubai at the time and uh, Peter Grant, who was the Norwich manager at the time, he, he wanted to play me and Rob Earnshaw up front for Norwich. And he, he, he said to me, look, Earnshaw won't be going anywhere. I want you and him up front. And we're gonna go, we're going for it. Um, I'm getting back to blah blah blah, and he he did make me feel really wanted, and that was an option. I went down to Norwich, spoke to them, Mick McCarthy, who I've got a lot of respect for, great manager. Everybody who who knows him's got a lot of good mm. things to say about him. He was also straight down the line with me. Probably didn't sweeten me up as much as Peter Grant did, but he he, he said to me, "Look, I want you," and it was to play with, you know, Andy Keogh, which. I'd done really well with him at Scunthorpe, so that was a, a big plus for me. And then obviously Sheffield Wednesday, the ground was three foot underwater at the time. So uh, could you I, could you have honestly have ever played for them? You know what? A, a small percentage of me was like, you know what? I'd go there and go and show Sheffield United what they could have had. Mm. But I just couldn't do it. 
Honestly, I couldn't do it. When I walked out of there, I said to my dad, I'm not signing for them. He was like, good, I'm glad you've said that. <laughs> but I'm glad you've come as well. Because, yeah. you know what, you, you owed it to, to Brian. He's shown, inter- he's, show, he's shown interest at Scunthorpe. He gave you your chance. He's, he's wanting to take you again. But um, I just didn't feel right. And so I, I rang Peter Grant. I said, look, Peter, thanks for, you know, all the stuff you've done over the last couple of weeks. But um, I've, I've chosen Wolverhampton Wanderers. Rang Mick McCarthy up. I said... Mick, uh, ready when you are. He said, brilliant. Tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, meet me here, blah, blah, blah. Went home. I was thinking, right, going to Wolves. Brilliant, good move. Um, it's, what, it's what I wanted, back back, back um, up the leagues. And I got a phone call off <laughs> Brian Robson. And that was surreal at the time. My dad was like, blimey, Brian Robson's on the phone. And I was like, yep, yeah, right, see you tomorrow at 9 o'clock. I was like, right, I'm going <laughs> to... How am I going to do this with Mick McCarthy? My dad says, you're going to have to ring him. I was like, dad, you ring him. He's like, nope, you, you're doing it. I was like, right, okay. Was your right. dad your agent? Did he- no, no. Well, he uh, might as well have been at the time. Um, he, he he got me my... He did my deal to Scunthorpe, actually. Got me £100 a week more, which is another story. Uh, and £100 a goal. So he did well there for Good me. Dad. Um, yeah, so I, I had to ring Mick McCarthy and he was str- straight down the middle again. Yorkshireman, he's like, okay, Billy, sounded fed up in a, on the phone. Felt like I'd let him down a little bit, but I said to him, look, if it was any other club other than Sheffield United, I would I'd honestly I'd have been coming. He was like, yep, no no worries, no hard feelings. Um, maybe see you in the future, and which that was brilliant. I had a lot of respect for him even more for that. Mm. Uh, but then I was just so excited, so nervous, and couldn't wait to, I couldn't sleep, couldn't wait to come in the next day and obviously sign back for Sheffield United with Brian Robson as the manager. Some good players in that squad. Some great players in the squad. Um, yeah, some great players in the squad. We should have done so much better than we mm. did. On paper, they say on paper, you looked at that and you thought yeah, it should have that should have gone and, and won the league, but it doesn't always happen like that, and it certainly didn't with with the with the squad that we had. Did your role change? Because I remember that period because obviously James Beattie was in the team, and it seemed to me the way I remember it, that your role as a striker changed. You seemed to be the one running the channels and Beatty was the penalty box player. Is, is that how you remember it or is that not quite um, on the mark? No, I just remember me, David Cottrell and Stephen Quinn just free scapegoats a little bit, you know. Right. Um, but it was it was development of my career. It was something different. I was playing, yeah, I was playing a little bit wider of like either a left hand side of a three or right hand side of a three, mm. or even if I did play like up front with a two, like you say, I was the one dropping in, you know, just making making space for other people, which I didn't mind. I'm I'm a team player and that's what I do, and I just wasn't finding myself getting as close to goal as I was doing earlier on in my career, like I was doing it, you know, Scunthorpe and Rushton. But um, as people always say, you know, it's because he wasn't good enough to play in the championship, blah blah. blah but I was in, still enjoying it, but it just wasn't the way I wanted to wanted to play. But sometimes in football, managers have their opinions and the ways they want to play, and you have to either go with it or you you don't play. So I did that, and I I just took it on the chin and tried to do the best as I could. But obviously, I didn't score as many goals as I wanted to. Were you comfortable here? And the reason I ask that question is because when you've got red and white blood in your veins, as you have, yeah. Can you be guilty of trying too hard? You you want it too much, and does that affect your game? Yeah, I've, you you hear that, and I don't know. Trying too hard, I think maybe it's I heard it's getting to him the pressure, blah blah. blah. Yeah, it was a lot of pressure. Twenty years old, uh, signed back for two two million, whatever it was, and I was expected to score goals, and I expected myself to score goals, and just the first season didn't quite go the way I wanted to. I think I think I broke my hand. I had some like a cast on my hand, which it did affect me, especially like the way I was going, holding my body in mm. in games. And but you know, it's not an excuse. I, I I was trying my hardest. I was trying my best, and I had some decent games. But I was obviously back in and out the team as well, which as a striker it doesn't doesn't help. But Beats was scoring the goals, and we was doing okay. And uh, like I say, it was. It was a learning curve in my career at the time. Cookie, what you got? A second debut, Colchester, red hot out here. Remember? Um, yeah. Remember some of your teammates you played with in that day? Who played that game? <sighs> um, two apiece, who scored? 
two apiece, right? Right, no Morg's played, did he? No. No. Against Colchester two all. Yeah. Who played at centre half then? Killer and Lucchetti. Oh Lucchetti played. Right, I'm thinking of something else then. So it was Beats' debut, I think. He must have scored then. Yeah. Header? No? Can't remember. We're good, we're not that good. Yeah. I think they scored late on. <sighs> Colchester right. No, here. Colchester. Col- here. Oh, Colchester at home. No. We need your dad for this. I was just going to say, he needs to ring his dad, didn't he? Yeah. Found a friend. Yeah. So, a come member. on, tell me. Beats, so, so, Beats scored. Yeah, you and Beats played up front. Yeah. Um, more attacking players. I get Keep taken it. off 60 minutes. 87. Oof. <laughs> for who? Who, sh- who shot your hand on the way across? Oh, this is mental, this. I'm blank here. <laughs> it's another striker. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have to tell me. Webbs. Danny Webber. Great lad. Still speak to him now, actually, as well. Um, Other players, um, Naismith, Geary, yeah. Legit Wood, Hendry, Montgomery. Lee Hendry, some player, in, some player, some ability in training. Um, that's what I mean. With the players you've just reeled off there, it's. I, I wasn't in all, but I was like, look at look at the change room we have got. This mm-hmm. is brilliant playing in this team. You know, um, James Beatty, he was, well, I still speak to, he's still a great friend now. Uh, birthday today. Um he, some of the things he taught me in training or tried to teach me in training and some of the little things and advice, he's another one who's I have always had respect for for what he's done in the game, but for how he tried to help, not just me, other players. Um and, you know He was a character. He's a character, yeah. Yeah. Some people thought he was a strange character, but he's such a um <laughs> infectious character, bubbly character and always wanting to help others and I know that's exactly what he's like now. Um with whatever he's doing in, in, in life, whether it's, you know, football or not, he's he's always there and he's always got great advice for people. Who's been the biggest influence on your career? <clears throat> uh, well, there's obviously my, my dad, um, mm-hmm. my family supporting me. Um, along the way, there's been your Tony Tunstalls, your Ron Reed, your Kevin Foggs, um, Sean McCauley's, uh, my Middlewood manager Sean Kay. It's um, like an Oscar speech. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> no, there is. There's so many. There's, there is so many. So anyone who I've missed, sorry, but yeah, <coughs> you've helped me along the way as well because I, I don't, I don't forget people who have helped me because just anything. Just like I said about the AD Little John, I don't speak to him anymore, but I see him every now and again because I, I think he's still. He's in yeah. Um, just a little bit of advice. It just you know the the. the Little puzzles to my jigsaw of my career so far that have helped me go along the way and do what I've done today, and uh, I've I thank uh, a lot of people for that. We've covered spell number two, and then you let go again. Goodness me, where's your head then? Yeah, I remember it. Um, Cookie, I think he was around actually in the offices. It was a, uh, I think it was an R five deadline day that one, and it was Doncaster Rovers, and um, it, I think it was only alone, so I knew it wasn't you know the end, but. I did, I needed to get out, I, w- I was, uh, my head just wasn't quite right, I just needed to be free again and just get back playing freely and scoring goals, which uh, is exactly what happened and just to prove that, because obviously you are, I wasn't doubting myself, but there was people doubting can he score goals in the championship, blah, blah, blah. I went to Doncaster in in a very good team, um, a team that had a lot of belief, but had a lot of doubt was again that we were a good footballing team, but couldn't really achieve anything, but scored a lot of goals there and played a lot of games so I, I, it was great for me because I, I proved that I can you know and, and people were saying why would we let him go then but that's just football it mm. little things sometimes just don't work and um, for whatever reason it just wasn't quite clicking and I wasn't quite scoring goals like I should have been doing but when I went to Scunthorpe I, I proved that I can score goals in this division and uh, like I say I'm thankful for Doncaster for again giving me a, that chance. Because that loan eventually became permanent. And and I want to touch on Donny because that was a big period in your life for, for many reasons. Let's start with the football side of it because that seemed to me to be a spell where you were reborn, as it were. You looked happy there. Yeah. Well, you know, Sean O'Driscoll was a quirky character, but I know Sean quite well. He was brilliant. And the football that he played was yeah. magnificent, wasn't it? Sean O'Driscoll, the manager, uh, Richard o- Richard O'Kelly, the number two yeah. who's at Villa now. Uh, they were both brilliant for me, the football inside. John Ryan, who was the chairman, put so much faith in me. Uh, obviously, I think I'm still the club record signing and it was a lot of money for little Doncaster, as they get called. But um, 
it was brilliant time. Um, helped, I think, that I could live in Sheffield. Uh, wasn't a, a bad drive at all. Um, some great people there. I think there's only one left, James Coppinger. Uh, someone else. He'll still be there in 20 I years. Know. I know. You've got so much admiration for him as well, yeah. for, for as a as a person, as a player, and as a professional. He's someone I, I learned a lot off as well. Um, who, again, I've took a little bit of the, you know, we was captain and little things I've had to do as captain. I've chipped away at each captains that I've had, and he was someone that I took a a, a little bit from because he's he's a great a great guy on the pitch and off the pitch, and yeah, had some good times at Doncaster, but went through a couple of dark times um uh got divorced uh 20 23 maybe i think it was god knows it's a blur now um and then obviously i lost a child while i was at, at doncaster as well which um is something that was tough at the time but i'm i'm delighted to be able to say today that i, I got through it and it was football that got me through it and obviously the people around me but Again, I had some great times there, and uh, it's a great, great club. Twenty-three, you get divorced, you yeah. lose a child. Yeah, well, I lost a child. I think that was twenty, twenty-four. Uh, no, well, whatever, twenty-four, twenty-five. Um, yeah, I don't know how you handle that. No, because that's uh, still a very young age. Yeah, and still managed I'm, to play. I'm, I made mistakes, like obviously, like the uh, like people do, but. Mm. I uh, again, I, I, I'm a. I've got a lot of drive in me, and f in football and in life, and I d didn't want to give up in anything that I was doing, and I wanted to come through it, and um, wanted to try and make, make, you know, just get back on track. And football really made me get back on track when I obviously when we we, we lost Louis. Um, obviously, I scored that goal, which was selfish of me when looking back on it. Why? Um, well, why is that selfish? I was I didn't train for three days, didn't eat or drink. Um I remember running I was at the hospice in um Weatherby. Um Dean Saunders rang me and he said, uh, everything all right? I said, Yep, I wanna play tonight and he went, Really? I went, Yep he went, uh you've not been at training for three days but I said, Best news I've heard all day. You'll be captain tonight, see you tonight. Um um can't remember what, can't remember the exact words what he said was, but he just said again that it's the best news he heard all day, and that made me feel feel great. I said, look, I'm gonna go and have a little jog now, and I'll call you after and tell you how I feel. So I had a little jog. I remember a, a window going down on the van, and can't say exactly what he said, but there was speculation that I was leaving the club at the time, and um, he said he said a few things to me, and I just blanked him. And uh, drove on, and I was like, "Well, he's going to be surprised tonight when I <laughs> when I turn out for Doncaster." And um, selfish as in, I left obviously my now wife Jade in the hospice, and um, for me to go and play football. And again, I think it's the best thing that I did because he got. Um, <sighs> sorry, it's all right. Relax, Paul. Oh, Relax. Have a drink. <sighs> Take your time. Yeah, um, got got to the ground and <sighs> cops pulled me aside and he said, um, "Glad you're here," which again made made me feel good. And remember wearing the armband for the, for the first time in my career and went out and scored a goal, which is the selfish thing that I want to do. Um, sorry, it's okay, it's all right. I'll take a break. Another minute. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, that was that was a tough night. Um, but I'd, selfishly, I'd got what I wanted. I wanted to score a goal for for people to remember him by, and it's exactly what happened. And um, my, my teammates that night, the manager, the fans, the the whole world really, because it was that was. Um, Overwhelming the support that myself, Jade, uh, and my family got, just showed you what football, you know, the strengths of football and the mm -hmm. the, the beautifulness of football, uh, how it can bring people together. And I remember Tony Mowbray after the game, 
they beat us four three four one, I think it was. Um, he said it was a goal from heaven and it, something again that I'll I'll not forget. Um, and I remember him coming over to me and he said, "Well done, son. You done your son proud tonight," which was That's was brilliant. good as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, the kit man, Mud. The kit Mud. man. Yeah. <laughs> Top man. He uh, he did the t t shirt um off his own back and he said, "Look, done you that." I was like, I'd not even thought about stuff like that and. I was like, yeah, I'm going to wear that, going to score tonight. And, you know, that that's brilliant. Thank you. So a lot of respect for him for that as well. Um, still still speak to mud now, so that's it's, it's nice as well. He still batters me on Facebook, mate. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> keeps messaging me on Facebook every now and again. Yeah, so that was a, a real tough night. But, again, it, it did. Um, it helped me a lot, obviously, going forward. And um, I'll never forget the times at Doncaster for, for, the, for the tough times that I was having. Um, yeah. I had a few injuries there as well where I wasn't really looking after myself like I should have done um, which shouldn't have been an excuse even though I was going through a few bad things which I just had to keep picking myself up and say you know what there's worse people off I've got this opportunity you're a professional footballer you need to go and you know get yourself back on track and drag yourself through which I managed to do and yeah it was it was just that, all, that one thing I wanted to do and that was to just come back to Sheffield United which Took a quite a while to get back, but well, let's let's just have a look at that because we're aware of where you went, and if we talked about other clubs you did go to, we wouldn't have enough time. Yeah. But but Leeds obviously leaps off the page because of where it is geographically. Was that a good time? Yeah, no, um, I think I went there at a bad time. Not for me, for for the where the club was at the time. Um, I remember being sat in the office at Southampton, um, wanting to get it done because I thought, you know what. Leeds United, what a great club. I mm. uh, hear a lot of good things about it and I was, I was desperate to go there, to be honest. And it, it happened. Uh, and I remember driving past Sheffield from Southampton when I was going to Leeds and I was, you know, had a little smile as I went past, but I was going to play for, for one of the rivals and it was time to get yourself back, back career back on track as, um, as it was. And I scored on my debut um, after training once, which was was brilliant against Middlesbrough. Um, I'll never forget that one. That was that was a good game. Tongi had the shot, came off the keeper, and I tapped it in and took my shirt off and got off to a great start. <laughs> but before that, I remember signing actually, and um, it was Chilino, the the chairman at the time, or whatever he wanted to be called, and he had some green leather Gucci jacket on and stunk of fags, cigarettes, and I remember walking down the corridor to meet him and I remember his words and I was like, oh, here we go. He was like, Billy? I was like, hi, Mr. Chilino. He's like, I thought you was bigger than this. I was thinking, here we go. <laughs> but after I'd scored on the on the, on the the debut, he was best friends and, you know, he was happy that he'd signed me and blah, blah, blah. But um signed on the day, same day as Liam Cooper, actually, who's still captain now mm -hmm. and still keeping touch with him. They're doing a great job this season. So, you know... Hopefully they're in the Premier League next year, so it's a, a another good game for us. But um, no, I had some good times there. But again, I had uh, Hockaday who who signed me. Um, then Neil Redfern for a little bit. Then they had a few, even, didn't they? I don't even know his name. Uh, Milan Darkovic or or the other way around. Darko Milanic. That's the one. Um, he was useless. Uh, and then Juve Russell came in in the start of the season. And he was honest with me. He said to me, "You've." Third, fourth choice striker. I was like, that's never. That's not right. Blah blah blah. I'll prove to you and show to you that that's not right. But um, he then said to me, out in Austria, it was um, Sheffield United have shown interest. I was like, brilliant. When can I fly home? He was like, not just yet. We've got a game tonight. But an hour later, he then said to me, look, you're not going to be involved tonight. I was like, can I fly home? He was like, no. Um, something needs to be done before you do. But that was it. I knew. Then you know, Nigel Adkins had. Who gets a lot of stick, but he's been good for me in my career as well. And I do hear a, a lot of fans who give him stick, but just he's a he's a good guy and he's a good manager. Just didn't work out here, and um, that's how it happens in football sometimes. But um, he he eventually brought me back, which I dropped from the Premier League with Southampton to Sheffield United in League One in the space of a season, as it was, and I, I had no problems whatsoever. It, I, I just had a good feeling about, apart from the opening game against Gillingham. But, um, but you, you <laughs> tried it twice and they say yeah. never go back. 
Yeah, but what, to be what honest, made, what made the first time, time wasn't for me. Was I was just a scholar, and then okay. I played once. That's all I did. All right. I came on for what three minutes. Mm. For me, that's not even a spell. Um, so for me, like, obviously, I come through as a kid, and then I've been here twice. And the last time, to be honest, uh, the time before this one, I had some great times. The Barnsley away in the snow, rain, sun. <laughs> I remember the photo of being on the side of a double decker bus, me and Beats in the yellow kit. Um, some great times. How about that QPR hat trick? QPR hat trick. Uh, that, I think that's the day I thought I made it. That was the day. That, that was that, the one. Was that it? was the day where uh, I thought I was in the garden. Um, big Hugo Aguirre, bless him. Um, what a man and what a player he was. Um, he's gave me he gave me great advice along the way as well. Um, I just remember him just trying to toe poke it, and I just shoved him out of the way and got my toe on it at the cop end. And that was the third, wasn't it? That was the third one. Yeah. Um, before that, again, Gary Speed. Like I say, you, you've gone through some tragedy um, in your life, haven't you? I know. Goodness me. And, yeah, to get that at the cop end, it was the best feeling. We've got some great pictures of that. Yeah. You, you must have them all over. Killer coming over the top. Yeah. Right, the, <laughs> putting me into the boards. But, again, I was I was a, I was a 20-year-old kid living the dream that day. And I, that was some moment for, in my career. That, that was up there still with one of the, one of the best personal moments anyway, definitely. You got any uh, questions around that, yes. Cookie? You normally have. <laughs> no, I was going to go back to that this third debut, and you talked about Nigel Atkins and it just not working out. Was there any clues to that on that first day of the season where everything was hyped up? Yeah, we, do you know we what went to, we went to Gillingham? Yeah, I really thought, you know, I thought because I've been under him before and got promotion at Scunthorpe, uh, Southampton, and I, I really did think, you know what. I had a great feeling. I thought we've got a good enough squad here to to do something. And the first day, it was a horror show, and the fans booed us off, and rightly so. And I was head in hands, and I was thinking, "What have I done? Dropped two divisions. I mean, you know, embarrassed in as a Sheffield United player again." And I, I really did think, "Well, oh, no, what have I done?" But personally, I did all right that season, and. Just tried to score as many goals as I can to help the team to try and get as as high as we can, but just didn't work out. And um, you know what happened after that is I couldn't have planned it any better. You said we had some right players in that team, and and obviously you was the you was the linchpin. You was the big signing of the summer. Can you remember? Can you remember that starting eleven against Gillingham that day? Uh, <sighs> Collar at the back. He scored on goal. Um, Longy in the net was he? Yeah, he was. Yeah, Longy in the net. Um, Kieran Freeman right back. Correct. Yeah, who was at the side of Col? Jay McEverly played. Uh, did Woolley play or did he come on? He played. Yeah, played. Me and me and was it Connor Salmon up front? No, no. Shay Connor came on for Jose Baxter at half time. But oh, yeah, Jose. Yeah, I remember Jose playing. You're right. What you're going to say there? You played up front with Shay. Shay, Shay Adams. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who I, f I think is a great player, and um, I do think that he'd have done well under the, the gaffer now, to be honest. I think, you know, I'm not saying it was bad that the gaffer got rid of him, but I think the gaffer could have got the best out of Shea, and uh, he, he, was a, he was someone who I enjoyed playing up front with, to be fair. Um, but, um, yeah, that was a horror show that day, and it was a long, long journey back, and things didn't get much better after that, but like I say, we had a mediocre season and I had an okay one and um, obviously um, like I say what happened after has been a, been a dream yeah. I'm not going to ask you for the rest of that team but you out of, out of the rest that was involved that day you've not mentioned Bash and I think you'll be disappointed yeah. if you don't sorry Bash, Colo, Kez and McEverly I did think we changed though formation that day as well and it got worse well Callum McFadden played as well so Callum you would have had the option to change yeah, that formation we did we changed all sorts that day and I think that I think if you ask Nigel Atkins now what we did, I don't think we stuck to something enough, but it's because if you don't get it right here quick, the, you don't get that time. And we tried all sorts of different formations, different players, different ways of playing, and we just couldn't get no rhythm. One one week we would be pretty good, and then the next two we'd be we'd be poor. And um, like I say, I'm, it's a shame it didn't work out, but that's what happens in football sometimes. Didn't start great for Chris though, did it? No, um, no. I remember, remember the first three or four games, which until Gillingham that time, 
uh, we couldn't we couldn't get off the mark either, and uh, we, we changed formation that day. Uh, I can't remember like why, but we we played it and we grounded out. I think it was a uh, me and Kez, me a penalty, and Kez scored at the back stick. I think I flicked it over or something, and we got a win. And I think the week after, I think we drew, but then went on a seventeen match unbeaten run, which from that day has been more wins than obviously draws and losses and lots of improvements and just people getting better and like you say one one man in in, in particular is Bash uh, great character in the dressing room uh, brilliant to have he's somebody if you are a manager you want him in there and obviously that's why he plays week in week out whatever division because he just ups his game and does what exactly what the manager wants and more and um He's one of the survivors from from that yeah. time as well. Current manager, major captain, which must have been such a huge honour. Yeah. Um, again, I was going to Dubai. On that, uh, on that point, when when Chris was appointed that day, yeah, and I think he said to me because we were doing his press conference and everything happened really quickly. That where's Billy? Do you know where Billy is? Have you got Billy's number? Yeah. Uh, and you were just going away, weren't you? Yeah, I just I was at the airport. Um, he rang. No, the the chairman rang me, Kevin McKay rang me and he said, look Billy, I've got some bad news and good news, what do you want first? I went, give me the bad news, he said, uh, Nigel Atkins got the sack, got the sack. I was like, right, okay, what's the good news? He was like, uh, the new manager wants to speak to you. I said, and I was like, oh right, okay. Not knowing what he was going to say, but the first thing he said is, um, well done last season, I heard you interview at the awards, I was there, which I didn't know. Um, I know how much it meant to you, how disappointed you was and how good you was about the season what you've just had. Um I want you I want you to be my captain f- for the club next season. And to be honest, I, I was I was shocked, I was surprised, but you know, I had a big smile on my face and um my wife Jade was like and I was like <laughs> and I was like, Yep, yeah, that's brilliant news. Um he was like, Can you come and see me tomorrow? And I was like <sighs> I, I was nearly going to say to Jay, look, I'll, we can't go on Audi because I need to go see the new manager. But I, I, I had enough willpower to say to him, look, I'm just about to get on a plane. I'm I'm going away for a week. And he said, no problem. Uh, give me a call tomorrow and just confirm to me that you're all right with being captain. Um, so that was it. Did you so, really need to ring the day after? Well, you not just I could have told him. Billy, I could, actually, yeah. I could have to- well, no, I did I'll tell him you. that I wanted to be captain, but he said to me, just ring me again tomorrow just to make right. sure everything, you know, have a sleep on it and <clears> make sure you're all right with that. And like I say, uh, a few drinks on the way to Dubai, smiling and telling, you know, my mum and my dad and um, and my, my wife. And uh couldn't believe it. I I was going to be captain of Sheffield United, which as a kid, you I didn't really dream of having the armband. It was just to play for the club and then obviously to try and score. But then to, to be captain as well was a real, well, a huge honour. And um, I, I rang him the next day and I... I it was, um, I rang him twice, he didn't pick up, and I didn't want to leave a voice ne- voicemail to obviously confirm it, but then he, he, he rang me back and I said, look, I can't thank you enough, it's a brilliant opportunity for me, um, I can't wait to be captain, and I remember walking around Bramall Lane, round the, round the pitch, with, with uh, the gaffer, and he, he was like, telling me things that he wanted from me, and uh, and asking about other players, and went through things with him and like I say I can't thank him enough for the for the opportunity and for the for the armband which I've worn now for the last four seasons with uh so much uh pride because obviously it's the the club I support as a little boy what kind of a captain are you um well I keep hearing from the boys that you know in pr- in program interviews and stuff like that that I'm one of the best they've had which I, you know um it's nice to hear because I, I've I had to change as a player and as a, as a person a little bit because there's responsibilities that you have to have every single day. You have to lead by example, which Billy Sharp at 20, 21, 22, 23 wouldn't have been able to handle because... And even when you're not playing. Yeah, which has been tough Yeah, which has been tough this season because yeah. um, I've not played as much as I wanted to do, even though I've played the last, you know, three or four or five games, which has been absolutely incredible. I've, I've loved being in the team and loved leading... Yeah, obviously going out at Bramlin, especially with the armband on, it does mean a lot to me. And 
Um, but in and around the changing room, every single day, he's the one who says, the gaffer's the one who says to me, you run the changing room, you keep it in, in order, and you lead by example, which I've tried to do. And I feel I have grown as a player and as a person and as a captain. And like I say, I've took little things off captains that I've had in my career. And um, I feel as though I've, I've done an half-decent job for the last four years. You've done a very good job, I would say. And, and obviously there was a, a big moment in January of 2019 where you became the leading scorer in the EFL. Uh, I always get this wording wrong. I've got it written down. You can tell me. It. What, what was the exact title of your record? The EFL's leading goal scorer English, of the century. Yeah, yeah, English scorer of the century, yeah. Um, Wigan away, was it? Wigan away, um, yeah. How much media did we do on the back of that? <laughs> I know, Just yeah. Just a bit of interviews the, the, after interviews. Uh, yeah. No, it was, again, that's another sp- another special personal moment. Um, mm. You know, scoring goals is what I love to do. And to, to, to get that, I didn't even know it was a thing, but... Again, my dad was the one who was like, "You look, you're chasing this, you're chasing Lambo down," and um, to get it, we played so well that day on a bad pitch. Um, we played very well, and it was nice to chip in with the goal. And obviously, to start the new year in 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 that fashion, where I broke the record, was was brilliant. And I saw it pop up on the TV the other day when Rooney scored his penalty. He's now caught Lambo and coming for me, so I need to get my. What's the gap? Uh, Between you and him, yeah, he's got no chance. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he's—I don't know—he's thirty behind, I think. But right. no, I'm just want to try and keep scoring goals for Sheffield United, and you know, keep chipping away. Obviously, Rooney's got a lot more Premier League goals than me, and whatever else, so he's got that one on me. Speaking of goal targets, you're on currently one hundred and four. <laughs> You'll know that. Do you know how many your heroes on? Uh, Brian Dean. Yeah. I've is well, my dad showed me something yesterday. He said I'm is ten. It every day you talk about stuff with your dad. <laughs> ten full time top scorer for Sheffield United. Yeah. So Th- there's th- there's different there's different stats if yeah. competitions you're involved in, but I think you're not far off reaching the top ten. In right. One of those, yeah. Okay. Dino's on one one nine, fifteen behind. One nine. How long's left on your deal? Got this and next, yeah. Be that so is that. Is that uh, is total? That's his total. Yeah, yeah not your total. Yeah, fifteen. And got about hundred and eighty something to catch. Harry Johnson. Harry Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen. To to get a hundred goals, Chef United is another huge achievement. If you'd have said that to me as a ten, fifteen, twenty year old kid, then I'd have snapped your hand off definitely to to captain the club to um, achieve two promotions is you know. If I've walked out of here today and the bus hit me, then I've had a good career. And <laughs> well, hopefully it does. <laughs> Brilliant. No, I've, you know, I've, uh, it's been unbelievable the last four years, is, and it's credit to the to the manager and his staff. They the ones who push us, and then I think it goes down to me bringing the lads and uh, every single person who's come in and put the shirt on has tried to be a part of, for this club to try and get as high as we are today. Your dad's got a lot of mentions, but <laughs> you're a dad to two as well. Yeah. How old are they? Uh, Milo, the youngest, is four, and Leo, the oldest, is seven, uh, which I'm on a little journey with him at the minute. Like I say, he's, he's playing for Brunsmere at the minute. Which Position? Is, Striker? Yeah. He wanted number 10. <laughs> they drew it out of a hat. He managed to get number 10. <laughs> oh, I was well, like, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, no, it was legit, and it was. <laughs> I was thinking, this was a good start. And then he played up front. He scored his first goal with his left foot, and then scored a few goals, but... I don't know, he's got so much energy. He's been playing midfield recently and he he's brought the other side of his game on because he, he didn't want to tackle, he didn't want to track back. Mm. I'm like, son, have you been watching me? <laughs> <laughs> no, and he, he's now starting to do the other side of it. He's playing on FIFA, he's, doing, he's mad into football. Um, but again, not just me, it's my dad as well. He's he's my, Both my boys know about Bobby Moore, Gordon Banks with one eye. <laughs> Leo now looks like Nobby Styles because he's lost all his front teeth. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, he's got por- Leo's got posters all over his wall now. My missus is pulling her hair out. Of saying, who? Every- Not everybody. Dad. Well, he's got one of me. He's Ronaldo, Messi. Like that's not even a question to him. Who Ronaldo or Messi? It's not a question. They are both good, Dad. I know they are. <laughs> um, he's got yeah. He's got a couple of Flecky. He's got Aguero and uh, who's his favourite United player? Favourite United, well, honestly, if I could show you my phone, last night, the little one, 
went to bed. He, he sings songs and we've got a monitor for him because he sleeps on the third floor on his own, his character. <laughs> he went to bed singing the Sa- Sander Burge, Sander Burger song. Do you want to give us a rendition whilst we're at it? <sighs> no, because he's better than me. He's so in tune. The oldest one's got my my music side and the youngest one, <laughs> honestly, he's... He's mental on football. There's no question he's gonna he's gonna want to get into it, and uh, he wants to play with Leo's team now, which obviously he can't. But they both both love coming to the games. Uh, both uh, doing really well, and I'm I'm proud of them both. Yeah. How important is that family time for you, especially being the, in the Premier League bubble as well? You've yeah. got to have that distance from it oh, with the said, same somehow, don't you? I said in an interview recently. I can't I can't remember when it was, but yeah, it was recently about. Um, Oh, it was with T actually. Um, a couple of days ago, I said about how important family and especially my kids are when I'm not in the team because a, a younger, immature Billy Sharp would have it can affect players, which it does, and it's it that is for me that's the hardest part about being a footballer: the setbacks you have, the injuries, the when you're not playing for for whatever other reason. Um, they're the hard times, but when when you're not playing, but you're training and you you think you should be playing, you go home and you see the kids. They think you're the best player in the world. They think you're the best dad in the world. They put a smile on your face. Yeah. They're the ones that you have to you know make sure you're in the right frame of mind for when you do go home because you can't let it affect obviously your your time at home. Any regrets throughout your career? I mean, I look back and you never scored in a Sheffield derby. I don't think. No, I've never scored in. Was Sheffield. that on, was that on the bucket list? <laughs> Anywhere. I'd, I'd love to score in a Sheffield derby, but I don't have that problem at the minute because they're nowhere near us. Um, yeah, I, I have scored against Sheffield Wednesday, which is enough for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Do you know what? You, you you joke about Sheffield Wednesday, and I would expect yeah. that, but I know I've, you... I've got a lot of respect for it. I know you have, and and that brings us neatly on to a story that surfaced <laughs> in the last week or so. Um, the granddaughter... Yep. A, a, of an elderly gent that was a Blades fan. She's yep. a Wednesday fan, yep. and he was desperate to meet you. And you'd made plans to go and see him, and sadly, by the time yep. you got there, he passed away. Yeah, the, I felt guilty about that one, but I did explain myself. Uh, yeah. We was in Dubai. Um, I seen I seen it by a lot of people, and I, I get a lot of requests, which you can't do everyone, but, you know, I try and do as many as I can, whether it's, you know, good or bad, I try and do things. And um, this one... I decided to do, and um, I felt bad because well, we was away, and the, the the old fella passed away, and I, I still went, and because she, the the granddaughter wanted to raise the, the wish of the uh, her granddad was to raise money for for cancer research, as it was, so I, I wanted to donate a shirt, which uh, a brilliant family su- supported both team, you know, half and half, and I had a big photo in the garden, which uh, it it. You know, made me smile because I felt like I'd give something back again, which um, you know I think it's important to do as well. Mm. You're very active, aren't you, on, on social media, <laughs> um, which, which in some respects is brave, yeah. considering the climate that we're in at the moment. Yeah, there's obviously good and bad things about it. Um, I'd like to not be on anything, to be honest, but that's just the way the world is these days, and um, I'm I'm just starting to launch my new academy actually which I can't say much too much about because I've not got too many dates and confirmation yet but again that's something I want to do because I used to go to Tony Curry's soccer school and oh we heard all about that when we had him on <laughs> yeah, yeah and uh I think it I thought it was great um the facilities back then wasn't brilliant but I think that's why it got blew up in top of the car park but um he gave something back to the community and um I, I, that's why I want to do it I want to give them kids who maybe aren't as fortunate to get in a Sheffield United, Sheffield Wednesday, Barnsley, Chesterfield, Rotherham, whatever academy it is, to so they don't just go totally away from football, so they can keep coming training, get quality coaching off, off myself and the coaches, and uh, to give them something, you know, to to try and you know not hang on to, but just to keep them active, whether it whether it's football that they want to do or, or not, it's giving them an opportunity to try and express their social skills plus their skills in football. Is that part of the planning process for what you do after football when you pack it in? How long you got left? I f- honestly, I, f- I feel as good now as I ever have done. I'm in the best shape of my career. But that's because when you're younger, you think you're invincible, you can do what you want. But if I had any um, advice to any young kid is to try and live... As a 30-year-old, when you're 20, it will be hard, but 
just you know it's uh, I do feel great and I've, I feel I have got you know two three seasons left in me maybe more uh, James Coppins is the one who I look, I look at and I think how's he still going but <laughs> he still looks as good now as he did back in the day so I'll keep going as long as I can and does it have to finish here Billy? I'd love it to finish here, definitely. I've got this and next, but I know I've got more than that. So it's up to me to keep showing the gaffer that I'm worth something to this football club. Whether it's a smaller amount and he's happy with that or, you know, I feel as though I can play every single game, which I do. I know I can, but um, I haven't done that this season, which, you know, we've got, you know, five good strikers. So um, everyone's had the chance and... We're doing really well as a as a football club, so I'm I'm just so happy to be a part of this journey at the minute and um, playing in the Premier League, Sheffield United. And when I do play, I'm, I'm captain and captain off the pitch is is something that is beyond my wildest dreams. It really is, and uh, I'd I'd love it to finish here, but I don't like saying I, I want to finish here because that's not what I'm thinking about. I'm not here just to see a contract out or. I want to keep playing football and scoring goals and I'll look in the mirror and I'll be the first one to tell the gaffer, you know what, I'm no good to you anymore, but I still feel I am, whether it's um, wh- however um, much it is to, you know, playing-wise. Do you want to be a manager one day? Yeah, uh, a few years doing ago. Doing badges? I'd, yeah, I'm doing my badges, yeah. Um, and it's, I've, I've got the level two and the B, so I need to go on to the next step, but, um, you know, it'll be some... For, some uh, journey to follow from the gaffer I'd, but you know he's he's worked so hard to get where he is today um, I don't think I fancy that going I think I want to be lucky like Gerard and Lampard getting straight <laughs> in but no credit to the gaffer he's started right from the bottom which started at a pub which is now a shop in Sainsbury's so he's I uh, don't think I fancy that one uh, I want to skip it a little bit but I'd love to be a manager um, but who knows I've got plenty more seasons left in me so I'm just concentrating on being a player at the minute not bad for a fat lad from Sheffield. Yeah, I should have probably sh- shaken that off by now, but it's part and parcel of me now. So uh, that was Sean O'Driscoll, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Uh, he, it was a game when we got hammered four 0 but apparently played really well. And we came in afterwards, and he went, um, "See you tomorrow." I was like, "See you tomorrow." This is the petulant, like immature Billy Shaw. I was like, "What do you mean, see you tomorrow? We just got beat four 0 Is that all you're going to say?" And he was like, "You shut up." Blah blah blah. When you're like this, you're just a fat lad from Sheffield. And blah blah blah. And I was like, right, okay. Everyone laughed, and I was thinking he's just put me right in my place there, which a manager should do. And again, Mud, he was the he was the idea behind it. He had um, fat lad from Sheffield, and obviously I, the next game was against Sheffield United. And I just remember going through scoring. Didn't want to celebrate, but obviously had the had the shirt and it stuck with me ever since. But at the time, Sean O'Driscoll was right. I was just a fat lad from Sheffield. So, um, but now I'm I'm just a lad from Sheffield. Nearly out of time, but a couple more best ever goal for the Blades. What would it be? Best ever goal, the one that really sticks out. <sighs> the one give me uh, you know the tapping against QPR to get the first ever hat trick to, to get a hat trick for Sheffield. Hat, it's just another tick, like you say. Um, the volley against Leeds was special. I'd been out of the team, come back in, two minutes, wallop that one in, that was a good feeling against, obviously, the old club. Um, I can recall one from outside the box. Shrewsbury, that yeah. was a good one, mm. but it just doesn't sound great, does it? No disrespect to Shrewsbury. <laughs> Shrewsbury away, great night. Uh, bend it off the right, well, it's not me, but I just decided to hit it and everything was going in at the time, so that was some strike, yeah. Enjoyed that one, but... Um, the header against Chesterfield last day of the season to get the 30th was an, another good achievement personally, but obviously the main thing was to get the 100 points, which that helped, and to get promotion. Um, I don't know, Villa away. That would have been some night, but that gets tarnished a little bit with a draw. I was gutted that night. Not because I'd scored actually, just because I thought that would have been one of the best results the club's had for, you know, however many years We've been with the gaff in that four years. Um because to go to Villa Park and play the way we did and we should have should have won. We'd have gone top of the league. That is the one for me where I've I've I felt it could have hurt us. And we had a we had a team meeting after that and it was all doom and gloom. We should have done this, we could have done that and blah blah blah. And that one was the game where we really shown our true colours and the characters in the dressing room because that like I say, it could have hurt us. I should have won and we didn't. 
we didn't get to top of the league and we, after that the back five and as a team and obviously Endo was the keeper we kept I think it was seven clean sheets on the spin and went on a 12-13 game I might be wrong with that however many game unbeaten run and obviously went to Ellen Road dug in Basham's arriving and I, I knew that day we was we was going on a, on a trip away because it was a break after that and I knew we'd we'd hurt them that day especially with the things that some of their players I'm not even going to mention their names um, had said we was well up for that game and um, that was a good day as well definitely but so that answered your question <laughs> yeah it does and, and the, we've got the shirts of your teammates up here yeah and they are mates aren't they brothers yeah, yeah we've yeah, I've heard that a lot it's like a team of brothers and it yeah. feels like it in a in a team and in a club you have to have not clicks not links but um uh, little part, I keep saying it parts uh, parts of the puzzle part of the, parts of the jigsaw and uh, the wing backs you know they they sort of having a competition which I think is great it's healthy competition who can get the assist and chipping in with the goals and then there's the back three the pistons as they call them um, there's so much um, down to earth banter and egging each other on which I think it's great. It is healthy. Um, and then, like I said, there's the strikers who, you know, we all want to play every single minute. We all want to score goals, but we're all egging each other on to try and do well because it means that we'll finish higher and be more successful. You know, we want to be the best Sheffield United team that there's ever been. And if we can be all a part of that, then, you know, Gaff keeps saying to us, you know, you've got a, an opportunity here that you might not get. So you've got to give it your best shot. And, that's exactly what every single one of the players is trying to do at the club at the minute. Billy, it's been a pleasure. You've been brilliant. I know it's been emotional for you at times, so I, yeah. I appreciate your honesty always. today. But I think we've seen a little side to you that actually we don't always get to see. I've known you for a long, long time. Yeah. Thank you very much always. indeed Cheers. for your time today. Wish you very well Cheers, mate. for the rest of this season. Billy Sharp, ladies and gents, hope you enjoyed that. Um, he was brilliant. And we are going to be back with another one quite soon. We'll let you know when that will be available. Um, enjoy the rest the games that are coming up before the next one over and out up the blades